You are now listening to the TPH Podcast, featuring your host, Wade Chandler. Well, Wade, what are we going to talk about today? I can't with you. Well, today uh, on the TPH Podcast, we're going to be talking about getting ready for the upcoming hunting season, what that looks like, and where we're going to go from here. So if you want to kick it off, Wade. <laughs> Welcome to the TPH Podcast. I'm your host, Wade Chandler, and as always, Sir Jonathan Fitzgerald. Fitzy, if you will. As he said, we're going to talk about getting ready for the upcoming season. Anything you'd like to add? No, no. In your NPR voice? No, I think that's that's it. (laughs) It's real nice. So, uh, I guess... We should start where with, you know, what do you consider season? I suppose. So for some people, season never ends. You know, some people are decoy dogging during the summer, you know, general summertime calling and whatnot, but technically season begins around October for most people. Some people wait till January after deer season to start. Well, I think thing, things pick up around here, September, September yeah. one. It's kind yeah, of when every, much. It starts I mean, everything off. Everybody gets out of their little fishing mode. Everybody's or back. Vacationing mode. And they're ready to start killing stuff. Trying to distract themselves away from the school year. <laughs> so, I mean, I'm just going to talk from kind of when I really start kicking stuff off. And that's the first cold front in October. But I start kind of pre-gaming real serious about now you know start shooting all the varmint guns get them back out like the primary varmint guns get them back out get them cleaned up start shooting them a lot more because you know during the summer i'm shooting more of the long range stuff kind of getting my deer gun deer hunting rifles tuned up if you will and all that but i'm gonna i'm gonna drag out all the varmint rifles get them cleaned up shot ammo loaded and everything else i'm gonna start doing some Getting more serious about scouting. Uh, start looking at, you know, if all of my good calling spots are kind of looking the same. Uh, start going out with the thermals, looking at the animals. Because we're, we're also going out this time of year kind of counting deer with the thermals. And at the same time, kind of keeping an eye on the coats. Uh, so it's like a general survey. Yeah. Kind of see what what looks like what, what season, or what the summer did to everything. Yeah, and pretty much. I mean, that and... We've already fired back up the game cameras because of the deer, and I'm already starting to see pictures of coyotes chasing deer, which we may go ahead and get start a little bit early on some of them. But I'm really starting to dial in the scouting. You know, you'll start really looking at all my spots, uh, seeing if anything's changed. You know, from year to year, especially out here, the, you know, Weather, water. Yeah. Basically what the weeds look like. Yeah. And out here, tumbleweeds. Seeing how and, bad it's going to be this year. Well, it's going to be easy to see them. Yeah, right. <laughs> but I don't, I can't see them having large packs this year myself. Yeah. Which, I mean, last year sucked. Looks yeah. like this year is going to suck again. At least out here. On account of it being so dry and all that. Because the deer out here. Uh, the deer are already not looking as good as they normally do, you know, and we feed you around water and all that stuff. But, you know, the drought is going to impact everything. Uh, I'm assuming that pup survival is going to be down. So we're just going around, getting a general survey of the area, kind of what everything's looking like. Start tuning up the rifles, start getting all the lights out, getting the batteries charged, going through all that. Usually, a lot of time... Almost every year, not well, not every year, but probably every other year at least, I go through there and I chunk all the batteries because I'm bad about it. I'm sure everyone else is leaving batteries on the charger all the time. And I just don't want to deal with short run times. Uh, now that we've really dialed down the lights a lot, it's not that big of a expenditure to change out all the batteries. 
start messing with all the e-calls, checking them out, which, I mean, I use them a few times during the summer, so I kind of already know, but I'm going to go ahead and replace the batteries in them, get them, you know, ready to go. You know, basically just a, a huge gear tune-up. I mean, that's... So what is your, you know, this year going, you know, 2022, obviously, uh, a big part of what you do and, you know, everything for munitions is it's a good time to start testing a lot of stuff. Yeah. 100%. So this season, you know, obviously you're around this time, you're going to start assessing what it is that you're testing and you've been working on loads. So you have a lot of stuff to test. What is, what, what do you have this year? It's <laughs> kind of priority or. I mean, really, really as far as ammo is concerned, we have a lot more deer loads to test out this year. Well, not necessarily test out because most of them I tested last season. So there's nothing really new. Yeah. It's just this season, since we're doing more filming and all that for the YouTube channels and munitions and all that, I'm starting this season off with not my normal routine is I'll take particular varmint rifles, load a bunch of ammo. I'll start shooting them. Well, this season we're going to be focusing on more content for munitions and all the other YouTube channels and all that. So I have a ton of ammo that we currently offer. And right now I've been basically going through all of it, make sure all the rifles are ready and all that stuff, which is like 40 or 50 rifles. It's a, it's quite a process, <laughs> but I've got a ton of ammo. I've been wanting to try out, like get pictures out, all that stuff. Uh, all the way up to like 30 on six or 110 grain V max, the 270, 110 V max, stuff like that. It's going to be really fun. I mean, I normally would not hunt with these, but since we offer it, we want to show people like what it does. You know, obviously it's not going to be fur friendly. Yeah. But I mean, most people, when it pertains to cows, if you're carrying a caliber that big, you don't really care about fur anyways. But as far as all that goes, I've got a lot more rifles to get prepared for the season. Make sure. You know, some of the optics that are on them are really more driven towards long range. I'm going to swap some of those out for like a, just a daytime coyote type optic, like real simple. Yeah. And then, you know, just going through there, cleaning them all up, shooting them, getting them fouled back in, make sure I know what the drops are and all that stuff, which. Well, you're doing it before it's actually time for season. Yes. Yes. I always like to prepare beforehand as everyone else should. Um. So, <laughs> you know, one of the things. Like you said, doing content, I think one of the, provided we get a certain somebody who may or may not be here tomorrow, um, you know, get him on board. You know, we have a lot of different ideas that we're working with, but one of them is testing out the new, uh, the new SIG cartridge, the 277 Fury. Yes. We uh, may or may not have some ammo ready to go. It's more just getting out there and, you know, the rifles, we have 13 inch barrels trying to take that out to how far do you want to shoot odd ad with it i forget i would like to do at least a thousand yeah but i mean i'm not you know eight eight hundred to a thousand is about where i want to and you ought to do it just fine just a test test and see what the bullet performance looks like you know so what is it out of a i think out of the out of a 16 inch barrel they're getting 20 inch six five green more performance is that right something like that i don't remember but like more energy than it's 20 inch 6.5 creed more out of a 16 inch barrel so yeah it was something something really good i mean i 100 percent plan on before we take it all to ed country doing some accuracy no tests work and, and yeah there'll be lots of i'm assuming once we fire that up there'll be lots of content coming out about it like real world accuracy yeah and uh you know more you know yeah the gun and everything we'll talk about it because it's cool but you know, we'll cover the rifle, what optic we choose, the accuracy, real world accuracy and velocities and all that stuff. And I guess that'll kind of determine what we end up taking on it. But I think it should be capable of a thousand yards pretty easily. Yeah. I mean, as, as long as that means semi auto, as long as the accuracy is there, we, we don't know what the accuracy of their ammo is. And that's right. Right now, we're kind of, st if we're to use the, the high performance stuff, we we're stuck with their ammo for now. We could pull a projectile. We talked. I mean, <laughs> if it's if it's needed, we we'll probably have to. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, well, surely, well, you never know. Surely, it's at least one MOA. From what I understand, on the Sig Ammo team, like they're doing, like they're pretty on top of their stuff. I haven't shot a lot of their 
center fire like her big stuff. You would you would think being that's their new cartridge and the first gun they plan on coming out with uh, like really commercially that's not the special edition one is the cross. You think it would be pretty, pretty squared away. You'd hope so. Yeah. Um we'll see. I mean, I hope so. So that's fun. Um you know, is there any any other things you're looking at this getting into this season, you know, tons uh, I mean, another part of prepping for the season is hunting racks. Uh, if you're waiting to the last minute, you should. <laughs> yeah. But. Well, I mean, speaking of that, I mean, we've kind of, that's been a, a big thing in the last year that we've gotten a handle on is the, the chairs for the racks. Yeah. That you've been doing. Um, yeah, we've, uh, I mean, in like always, I'm currently working on new stuff and. Right now, right, right now, what do we, uh, what do we have available? Uh, the business class, economy class, is what we have available now. And like I said before, so we kind of we redid the line. I don't, I don't think we've ever talked about it on the podcast. No, I don't think we did. We have like a basically economy being what it, it's very simple, not, not very complicated. And then you have your business class, which is suited around hunting. You know, night hunting, being able to run two lights, being able to run your gun. Everything's mounted. There's nothing. Yeah, everything's Arca, nice and simple. Basically, what we did was, because of in all the stuff that's happened and how expensive the first-class chair got. The materials and just... Because, I mean, it was quarter-inch plate and a lot of it, so it went up tremendously. It was already an expensive chair because it is, like, it's like the Cadillac. So what we're, what we're doing, working on currently, what we did first was we redeveloped the economy, which used to be the business class. We bumped it down to economy because we got it at a certain price point, which is a good one. Good price. It's a good chair. It's simple. It's for like your lighter weight applications and the guys do, that don't run the, all the lights on the chairs. But we are coming out with a plate for it that you can run lights. And it's just a single arm rest, super simple chair. Yeah. Whereas the new business class, it basically looks just like the first class, but we shrunk it down. Made it more lightweight, made it way more affordable. So those are the two chairs we have available currently. Now, in a previous podcast, we talked about chairs for just a minute. We didn't get into it, and maybe we'll do. Like, once I get those things built, I want to do. Well, yeah, th- that's part of part of this podcast is we're, we're kind of prepping. You know, we know a lot of people are getting back from summer. They're going to start thinking about a lot of these things. So I think the next plan for the at least the next five podcasts is really. You know, pre- a lot of the previous ones are like we get people in here to talk about stories and this that and the other but one to really kind of narrow in on like technical details like yeah. rifle setups calibers you know hunting and, and also get feedback from you guys what are you what you're wanting to hear right. more about um because i'm not even sure what in terms of what the scope of this going and with producing content even looks like throughout the rest of the year but yeah i think we should at some point take a time i don't know i don't know necessarily a podcast as much as like a youtube video right going into details but Essentially, it's just chair platforms. We're trying to, everybody's always had their way of doing it. We have a streamlined method. Um, try to make it simple. We've been trying to simplify it even more so we can you know, ship them yeah. anywhere. And That was that was the biggest thing is we got them shippable. And that, and there's still a lot of people that don't know about it, but we're going to be coming out with some videos soon. Yeah. Um, but the two a, chairs available on the website, we can't ship. It's a chair. It's pretty much ready to go. You just weld it into your rack set up with a weld plate. Mm-hmm. And then pass that, put a coat of paint on it or whatever you want to do, however you finish your rack out. But that's kind of a big thing. And that's more towards, you know, obviously the beginning of next year, very late season this year. Um, So we plan on, he said, we plan on putting some stuff out on that. Yeah. And last time we talked about it for just a brief moment, I made, I I didn't say something correctly. So the first class is still going to be an option and you're going to be able to purchase it on the website. But you'll have to pick it up in person because that is the bigger one to have your one, kind of like the Cadillac. And it costs too much to ship, and it's too awkward and big to ship. But we're currently redesigning it slightly, and hopefully by, like, December, we'll have those up on the website. Because it's going to become, because of the materials cost went up on it, it's become a full custom option. But anyways. Okay, yeah. Back, back to preparing. Uh, we're also currently testing a rack system and which i've already got it 
spun up ready to go on the truck. And I've already tested a few times, but we've been making slight changes, and it's going to be a modular rack system. But that's all I'm going to tell right now. But I know a lot of people wait to the last minute to get their racks prepared and all that stuff. Because, I mean, we sell the chairs. We know when people are buying the most, which is during varmint season. But I would urge you to go ahead and pull that rack out. Start doing some repairs. If you're going to add some chairs, add some chairs. and Because that's what all, that's what really what we focus on all summer is getting these changes, uh, upgrading new product and all that stuff all throughout the summer. And we start testing it right about now if it's a new product. If we haven't already gotten it out and tested, like the remote holders have already had some out testing. We're getting all of our gear prepped, ready to go for the season. That way, during season, I can be focused on going hunting, not preparing gear. Now, uh, in terms of equipment, you know, it seems the most product releases happen first part of the year. Is there anything that you've recently got or you're excited to test out? Obviously, the new Vortex Scope, which you've already been shooting with. Yes. That was the LHT. The Vortex Razor LHT 4.5 to 22? Something like that. 4.5 to 22. Really like it's a first focal plane optic. Really like it. It's illuminated and all that stuff. It's a more of a compact than their their other scopes. The LH Razor LHT line is like I say it was. They recognized that Leopold was doing really well with the VX5 VX6 series, so they had to come out with something like it. Well, yeah, it's like not all hunters want cheap optics, right? You know, and like not everybody wants a heavy razor, <laughs> right? <laughs> I mean, it's. It's a well-rounded optic. I mean, it's even a, my personal opinion, it's even an upgrade from the original LHT, which was, was two different 3 to 15s. Which is, they're good scopes. But this one seems a little bit better to me, to myself. Yeah. You know, through my eyes. But, I mean, you know, as far as that one, it's going to be, so it's a first focal plane, but it is illuminated. So it is an option for night hunting. Although I'd rather, I much more prefer a second focal plane for night hunting. But, Daytime hunting, not a problem. But like I said, it is illuminated. So even on the lower powers, you can see your reticle, which is an issue you run into nowadays. Any new uh, lights, calls, anything else? I haven't really seen anything, but I don't. Lights, no. Calls, the Super Revolt, I think is what it's called. So I got this call, the Super Revolt. Okay, yeah, Super Revolt. And I was super excited. When we went up to Oklahoma, I didn't even, like, I pulled it out of the box, plugged it in the charger. So it's just a bigger version of there. Basically, yeah. Okay. It does, It's slightly different on a few features, but I can't recall all of them because what I'm about to tell you. <laughs> so I put, plugged it in the charger, didn't look at it, as I never do. I got up in my little equipment room. I got all the chargers and all that stuff. And, uh. Thought it charged overnight, unplugged it, packed it up, got all the way to Oklahoma. It wouldn't turn on. <laughs> Fun. So, I mean, and I was like, oh, oh, and I almost didn't even take a secondary call, which is unlike me, but I always take one, which I took my other lucky duck. Because, again, if we're doing any kind of vocals, which is primarily what we do during decoy dogging, I want the lucky duck. It's just, it is what it is. But I got in contact with them. They're like, oh, we're terribly sorry about that. Get it sent in. So I just shipped it back not that long ago because that was my fault. I sent on it, you know. Yeah. It's not high priority. But I did send it back, and they did get it. And I should be getting a new one here pretty soon, unless it's already there because we get everything shipped up in town. But that's the new call I'm really – like. because out here <laughs> on super windy days, you want some more volume. Yeah. That's just all there is to it. Pretty excited about that. I mean, other than, I mean, other than that, there's not a whole lot of new stuff right now. Yeah, it's, it, this year, and I, I'm I'm guessing because you know products take time. Right. After 2020 and 2021, a lot of people are just getting caught up to where nobody's really been releasing much. No, I mean, it's new calibers. Well, I say that. I mean, same calibers. It's kind of picking up steam. That seven yeah. millimeter PRC. <laughs> from your favorite youtuber um it, i mean it's only a matter of time for they come out with seven millimeter prc you know i'm pretty i like seven i like seven millimeters if i can run at least 180 grain projectile or heavier and that's just for long range hunting stuff i don't 
I mean, I suppose it'd be fun to load a 110V Max in. I mean, why not? <laughs> we typically try that out on everything. The only one I haven't done yet is the 300 PRC. And I think this winter I'm going to do it. Load up some 110V <laughs> Max. I bet it would split a cow in half. Because, I mean, when I first got my first 6.5 PRC, the first demo I loaded for it was a one. 100 grain LDM and it literally almost split a cow in half. It was awesome, which I was also, I think I was pushing them 37, 3,800 feet. Jeez. I was laying on them pretty hard, <laughs> which is why that barrel didn't last long. Yeah, that's that'll do it. Yeah, that, your barrel shot out super fast on that guy. Yeah, well, I mean, it, what, it was a thin pro- profile. It, oh, it was a climber, wasn't it? I think so. Yeah. It's yeah. real, real I mean, thin. It was nice. Good rifle was just, I burn it up. I mean, especially ammo like that. But this year, I'm going to talk about calibers for a minute. Yeah. Because uh, uh, we get asked all the time, what are you shooting this year? And it's changed over the past couple of years because of the ammo crisis and all that. This year, you know, my primary hunt, not all the stuff we're testing or getting, you know, pictures and photos and for fun. Primarily, I'll be running that fourteen five six R. Yeah, uh, I think I finally landed on a scope. I'm going to leave on for a minute, but it's only right now. The right, uh, not razor. Yeah, it is razor one ten. Oh, okay. The mill version. So, you know, I had the the you know, BDC version first, yeah. and the the center aiming dot was just a little bit too big for my liking, so I pulled it off, and then I went through all these other scopes. But I like, you know, I actually like the Athlon 2 to 12 with the offset red dot. Because the whole purpose of that is so I can get a thick brush or shoot out long range. <clears throat> Which I'll be shooting white tail as well with that little rifle. I, I love that little rifle. Yes, I said I love a semi-automatic. I can't believe it either. But. Just need some brass for it. When I, exactly. When I uh, looked at the mill version of that razor. I liked it. The, the center aiming dot is just a little bit smaller than the BDC version. So I stuck it on, been messing with it. I like it a lot. So I'm going to run with that probably until I find something else I want to try. Yeah. <laughs> so shooting some arc, what other, I feel like there's another, cal- my brain's dead right now, but uh, there's another caliber that we d- have been getting into. What is it? Cause you have the last season you 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 ran the fourteen and a half six arc last season quite a bit. Yeah, I run, I run it primarily last season and the two twenty three. Well, that's really about all I ran last season with the arc, because you know, the other day I got a, a guy was like, why why six arc? You know, why not a two forty three or six creed? <clears throat> Number one, uh, yes, I'll shoot the two forty three just because for ammo testing purposes, but primarily hunting. I've gotten to where I like to get up on the call, like in shotgun range or get in the thick stuff and let everybody else watch the downwind more than, more times than not. So most of the time I need to be able to shoot up close, you know, out too far away. So I've really been running these little short semi-automatics like SBRs and pistol type rifles. But why the six arc over the six Creed right now currently is because it uses way less power <laughs> and it's, it's just way better in a shorter barrel platform. You know, yeah. the six creeds are good and everything, but when you look at case feel barrel length, 18 inches is about where I like to stop. Nothing shorter than 18 inches. Cause it starts getting kind of in the territory you should be in with arc or the, or a Valkyrie, you know, or two twenty three stuff like that. Those case feel is just way, way easier to load those for short barrels than it's say a six creed. But, as far as the other caliber, I don't, I don't recall. <laughs> yeah, that'll happen to you. I know. I'm still kind of keeping an eye. I need to get an eight point six barrel so we can start playing with eight point six blackout. Be interesting. Be super expensive to load for. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, with how much projectiles have gone up, I can, you know. It's well, it's funny though on the eight point six blackout. I'm actually looking at it right now. It's everything's out of stock. Oh yeah, it, you know. When is uh didn't Q buy a bunch of ammo from Hornady? That's supposed to be a thing. I, I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah. Wonder when that's gonna 
Because right now, the only people doing it is what? Discrete? Yeah, Discrete Ballistics, uh, Gorilla Ammunition. Oh, that's right. That's right. Those are the two. Yeah, I'm kind of, I have the dang, I have a fix ready to go. I just need the barrel. It'll be interesting to play with. Um, I mean, it'll be a great pig round. What sucks is I have to get a new can, so I'll have to get a, I don't know, yeah. I'll have to figure that out. So for the people that don't know, what is the 8.6 blackout? It's like a 300 blackouts, older brother. Um, just the three, basically think, you know, I would say large frame because I think in like AR-10 versus right. AR-15 format, but large frame, uh, 300 blackouts. So 338 projectile, similar concept. It's, uh, you know, short barrels, super subsonic, really quiet. That's kind of the... The go with it. Um, 338 projectile. Yeah, what's... It's basically, don't they just shorten and neck up a 6.5 Creed case? I believe you know so. What it is? Yeah. So it's the standard... Because at one point it was 8.6 Creed more. Yes. I don't... Yeah, 100%. I remember that. Um, but the big thing about those, and you know, I know it's something I want to see, and it's something I've been reading a lot about, is all about the... They're running those super high twists, yeah. which means... Which also limits your projectiles even more. Yes. Um, but watching discrete ballistics, they have a lot of interesting videos and stuff on the actual expansion of the bullet. Right. Which makes sense. Obviously the bullet's going to expand more if it's spinning faster, but like what is, you know, it's, it's one thing to read things. I, you're, I know you're very much this way. It's like, I want to see that. I want to see what that looks like in real life, yeah. you know, on, on targets yeah. that aren't steel. Um, yeah. If they're, so, I mean, Modern projectiles have gotten constructions way better. And, you know, the solid projectiles have gotten way better. Uh, but they, they figured out what varmint hunters have been probably experiencing for years, which is when you spin something really fast, it basically opens up faster. And as it pertains to, like, something that big and heavy, what are the standard weights, like 200 to 300 grain or something like that? Or Oh, I don't even know. Give me. I know they have like the I think the smallest one they have is maybe a 165 TSX or something. Yeah. But I think this, you know, your standard option is probably gonna be around 200 grain projectile. All I know is I can't ever remember numbers. Right. Especially when I'm on a microphone. <laughs> so, so the, what they're you know the, that's a big, long, heavy bullet. Yeah, the subs are 300 grain. Yeah, that's huge. Um. So. I think I'm seeing subsonic. So. They wanted the accuracy to be good, so you got to have a super fast twist, especially when you start talking like 10 inch, 12 inch, 16. Yeah, inch I think 12 barrels. inch is the common one. So they had to give it a fast twist, and I think what is Q using one and one? There's something crazy like that. One or one and three. One to three is the uh, everything I've seen. But an interesting, <clears throat> I guess, byproduct is what you would say. I say that no on the uh, <clears throat> interesting on the eight inch, um, so one to seven. Hmm. Then the uh, the one uh, the twelve inches of one. To, these are all the factory fixed barrels. The uh, twelve inches of one to three. The sixteen inches of one and three. Interesting. Anyways, interesting byproduct of all that is. Oh no, I'm completely wrong. Ignore me. This website's <laughs> formatted super weird. That was the six five Creedmoor barrel. That's what I was, I was about to say. say. That sounds off to me. The eight one. It's catching me. Yeah, no, they're all one to three. Ignore me. I'm an idiot. So interesting byproduct of fast twists and all that is if it, if it's running a fast enough velocity with a super fast twist, it's going to get the projectile open up. So when you take these slower projectiles, if you're just running a standard run of the mill projectile in a slow twist barrel, one, it wouldn't be accurate very far if it was accurate at all. Because it's got to stabilize this big, heavy bullet. Yeah. Two, if you can increase them RPMs, as soon as it makes contact with something, the higher the RPMs, the more it's going to open up faster. So that's kind of how they're really they're gaming the system. And you'll see it, you know, varmint hunters talk about it a lot, it's a splash. Mm -hmm. So when you take a lighter grain projectile, push it at super fast velocities, you can get those RPMs, you know, up exceeding, was it 300K? I think it was. It is. This is the no no spot. I think it's 300K. That's when you'll start seeing splash <clears throat> on a varmint style projectile. It won't even make entry sometimes. It'll just open completely up on its on its skin. 
So it's, you know, kind of the same concept, obviously a lot slower, but that's how they're getting those massive projectiles open up and expand and all that. It's such slow velocity. Oh, golly, I'm having some issues over here. It's like that thing we talked about before the podcast. <laughs> I think it's something to do with when I get on the podcast. You need a drink of water? You have a drink of water? I've right been there. drinking water. I'm trying not to gurgle water on the, the microphone. Well, maybe we could do this while you... <sighs> Anyways. So, yeah, I mean, hopefully I'll be able to find... I probably wind up having to overpay for one... Probably. And then I have to find, I need to find out if those, I know CGS did a run of suppressors and a thread pitch that'll work. Isn't uh diligent going to be doing one? I'm sure everybody's going to be doing one. Oh, I'm sure. Except for the company who came out with the caliber who doesn't have the suppressor available yet. <laughs> we, love, we love you, Ken. <laughs> when are they, uh, so like, what's the deal? When are they going to come out with their barrels and all that? Well, they, they, the barrels are out. They just sold out oh. quickly, which I mean, I don't of know. Of course. I don't know how many they had, but there's, you know, the 16 inch, the 12 inch, the eight inch. I think I want the 12 inch. I think it would too. Cause I, like, I don't want to go too short. Like 12 yeah. inch, like 12 inch with a suppressor seems like a, like with, with a fix and how light it is. It seems like perfect. Yeah. I can, I can agree with that. I mean, it's probably not something I'm never really going to use, but would definitely like to offer ammo and who knows when the brass is going to be available. We might as well start testing now. I mean, yeah, I mean, you know, I think I'm more into that stuff than you are. I'm 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 cool and cultured, as the kids say. Oh, jeez! I listen to jazz music. <laughs> um, it would make a great pig round. I'll I'll agree with that. Well, I think like a bolt action in a truck, especially you, with a can on there, which a three thirty eight cans typically are going to be a little bit longer. But you know, stock folded, it's a really compact setup. Yeah, I've really uh, since getting in like the whole ammo crisis and all that, I've really got adopted the short barrels. Uh, a lot i'm kind of getting to the point which if i'm in a rack <sighs> come on people. i'm in a rack <laughs> come on people if i'm in a rack at night time i still want a six creed or a 22 creed 100 percent. and if i'm hope if i'm hunting wide open country and it's late season where they're kind of hanging out a little bit further yes any other time i'm really getting into short barrels really like the maneuverability what's well, like it's that and even just like maneuverability just taking it in and out of a vehicle even yeah it's like sometimes like when you get a longer gun i'm just like cheap with a, the rest of, even anything over 20 inches with a suppressor it gets a little bit absurd yeah well i mean the other day when we was uh going to the stand that little sig vertus mm-hmm. i don't remember the barrel length. so i got a little i don't know five inch suppressor on it it's kind of loud but whatever I can fold the stock down and it fits in my pack without hanging over, but maybe an inch. And that's pretty nice. Like if, especially if you're walking through trees and all that stuff, it's pretty handy. Yeah. Uh, what do you want to go next? You know, I mean, touch a lot of different bases. Uh, and we talked about kind of what our plans are for our season. I think so you're not expecting it to be very productive of a season in terms of animals. I don't feel like it will be. I think we had a numbers were down last year and with the drought, like yeah, going from been, numbers down and then on top of that, throw a drought on it. Terrible environment for pump survival. Yeah. They probably already had less pumps. I'd imagine, but due to the fact that, you know, it was such a poor year leading up to that, but who knows? It can be, you know, you can sit here and speculate all we want. I'm just going off of what I've seen as far as other animals populations i can't see them having huge litters of pups this year in our area i mean there's no doubt going to be somewhere where somebody's got tons and tons but i don't think this is a year at all but we're still going to go out do a bunch of hunting this year and hopefully get a bunch on film that's our biggest thing we're gonna be working on a little chair to put a camera rig on so hopefully we'll have a little bit of night footage this year. Yeah, hopefully. Um, past that, I mean, you know, obviously deer season. Do you have any plans for any other hunts that aren't just normal? Are you going to try and do anything? I think Jeff was supposed to come back, but I don't know. And we hadn't talked about it since we talked about it. Yeah. Uh, I am going to get in contact with him because if 
if he's not going to come back, I'm not going to sit on the other place. We're going to go early October when it's fun and get some good footage. Oh, okay. See what you're out saying. west. And then, obviously, I won't be able to go to Oklahoma until after deer season, which we're going to get a bunch of good footage there. It's going to be fun. I don't know. Just kind of, I'm ready to do some hunting this year. Yeah. We're, go- we're actually going into season with plenty of ammo, which is great. Uh, I think we're going to be able to sneak away a little bit more this year. So who knows? I mean, I'd like to go down to Comstock when we do our all dead thing. Also do some fox hunting. It'd be great. Mm-hmm. Plans are just to hunt as much as possible. Hopefully what, we have a good. What about going into uh, uh, contest season? I, sounds like you know plan is. Jordan and Jaden asked me about hunting with them, but you know it all depends if we do our own and all that stuff. But hopefully we go. Regardless. Sounds like we need to go do the weigh-ins. Regardless, we are to go to the weigh-in set up. Set up that way we can record like three, four podcasts. Well, yeah, not only that, just I've never even been. I've we need cool to go to you. set up a little booth. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. I don't. I don't really have anything else. I don't either. Unless it, like anything we can get into would like spur on a whole long conversation. I guess we're gonna wait for the next one. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we had a bit of a bit of an error. With Snafu. Some, we had, a, snafu with a, we had a thermal night vision episode planned today, and the audio left. Yeah, audio just <laughs> ran away. I don't think you got, wanted to watch Wade without audio for more than about 10 seconds. So That's rude. Mm, sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, past I, that. I do, I do want to get, I guess we'll have to get him back, or me and you could even do one. Well, I'm, uh, I'm going to try and recover it still. No. Oh, okay. But that's going to take some time. I still want to. We haven't really covered enough thermal and night vision stuff. Not, we do have some guys planned. Uh, next week we have a guy coming in that does a lot of thermal and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but I do want to cover that more because it is popularity has exploded. I mean, that's really, you don't really see, it's funny because you don't really see any advances in the lights, like lights getting any better. Like I think Fox Pro came up with a new headlamp. That was it this year. Whereas thermals and night vision, like they're just, spitting those suckers I was going to say, I I can't even keep up. No, I mean, that's when people ask me, I'm like, even if even if I could, and it's technology, so it's my Achilles heel, it takes me about a year to learn how to use something. You can't keep up with cost because this stuff is not cheap and there's just constantly new ones coming out. And I just tell everybody, like, my experience is the newer the stuff, the better, the easier I mean, heck, it is even, to use. I saw on uh, Instagram today, somebody oh. was posting, it was a, I think a four thousand dollars Steiner thermal clip on. Yeah, and like the the quality of that footage was so good. And I'm like, I I can't tell it. I know it's cool. I know what like the cool people thinks cool. <laughs> but that's all. That's all. Like typically, like military. Yeah. Way overpriced garbage um, versus you know the actual consumer market for the stuff. And yeah, it's just. I know since what's crazy is okay, if I get this audio recovered, we post this podcast. I mean that was. Less than two months ago. Right. But it's like, it's, to some extent, some of it's already outdated because exactly. new, new stuff's been dropping. But Yeah. Um, well, I guess let's uh, let's wrap it up. Here's what, here's what I want you to do. I want to, you know, what has been your favorite part of this uh, of this week? My favorite part of this week? This month. We're in this August. This month? August, we're August 10th. It's been 10 days. What's something you're appreciative of? I'm appreciative of? Yeah. Uh, the fact we got in some primers today. <laughs> oh yeah, we did. We did get some in uh, some of them small rifle primers. It's better than nothing, you know. That's pretty much it. Give me, give me, send us off. Or you gonna send us off with some NPR voice? Well, uh, thank you guys for listening to the TPH podcast. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let us know if you have any questions down below, and we'll get those answered. <laughs> it's kind of creepy. <laughs> Y'all have a great one. See you guys next time.